Um, but now I want to play five questions with you before we let you go because you've been. Oh so my gosh, this is gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard. I'm gonna be hard. You've been so entertaining. You've been oh, well. you've been as delightful as I thought you would be. As delightful as an intelligent as I you've thought you'd be. You've been so charming to me. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. <laughs> So I'm going to ask you just five questions. These are pretty random. Just curious what your answers might be. All right. So if there were a movie made of your life, which there likely will be, let's hope it comes out better. <laughs> oh, no. Before we get to that, what did, you, what did you think about an Irish woman and an Australian playing two of the icons of British history in, in the movie about Elizabeth and Mary? Oh, I mean, I enjoyed I enjoyed the movie. I thought I I thought it, I thought it was. I mean, there were things that were changed, but I thought it really I only got a good really came, got across how Mary was surrounded by men. And you know what? It really does fascinate me because um someone a lot of people wrote to me. They like you to kind of fact check movies, and someone got very upset that there was a a black gentleman um in in the play playing Randolph the ambassador. You're like we can't have that. You can't have that. You're like but actually, but there were black people and people of color in the 16th century. Now, there weren't ambassadors, but they were there, but there weren't any Australians. So why, why is it anachronism? <laughs> what did they get offended person, by that? <laughs> to have a British black person, why is that anachronism? Why, why is that? So that really interests me, what we think is a histor historical anachronism or not, what, what people think is too far on the historical wavelength or not, it, it mm -hmm. really fascinates me. Um, but I, I guess I, I thought the movie, I did enjoy the movie. I thought it was, I, I thought it was, I thought, I thought it was, I thought there was very interesting aspects. And of course, you know, but we would say that there just wasn't enough role for the dog. You know, where was the scene with the dog? Where was the dog? You know, we should have the dog running through it the whole time, popping up at times, you know, important moments, you know. You're talking about Sky, who went yeah. on to live in Elizabeth's court, in Elizabeth's court, right? And give all these loyal royal litters. That's yeah, how he will go down in my book. Yeah, she um, doesn't love their dog. They, they love, <laughs> she does love the dog. So, okay. So in a movie of your life, which there likely will be, who <laughs> will who will play Kate Williams? Obviously the most glamorous and beautiful and wondrous person there is. And the most, you know, glamorous actress. Oh my goodness. Who would play me? Um, well, um, I, 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 uh, oh gosh, that's such a hard question. Um, I, I do love Julia Roberts, uh, so but I know that I know that she's too busy to do work these days. But I think, <laughs> but, um, but but uh, but maybe uh, maybe we could persuade uh, Julia out out of time, and maybe we could uh, have have her play me. But um, but I, I yes I I I I think I'd be. I, I don't know. Yes, I think it'd be very boring biopics. I'd be, I'd be sitting. <laughs> yeah, like, no, I'd, no, it'll be entertaining I, with your time machines. Um, <laughs> it'll be well, science I mean, fiction. I've been on my best behavior today. I would do this. I did this twenty-six mile walk around London for a, a Ukrainian charity. On, on and by the, I was in such a bad mood. You wouldn't. So it's a good thing you went to Jimmy Lemon because I was, by mile twenty-two, I was so bored and, I was, and so cross, <laughs> and so tired. And I just thought, why do people run this thing? Why do they run the London Marathon? I'm never running it. This is walking is enough. So I'm, I'm, on, my, I'm on my best behavior tonight. But um, yes, I can't imagine a movie made uh, of me. But I, but um, yes, I, 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 I hope there's lots of Welsh people in it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, all right. So notwithstanding your husband, not counting him, who is your celebrity crush? Um, well, uh, is it, is it, if I say Barack Obama, is it just, is, it, is, it, is that what everyone says? Is that what everyone says? No, no. <laughs> no I don't think so. No. Uh, I think I just, I mean, what I'm very upset about, and I think I think we should have to share this now, is that why weren't we invited to Barack Obama's birthday party? It looked so much fun last summer. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's such <laughs> right. a great time. And well, they just didn't invite me. And, you know, I, I well, because it's social distancing, party. Kate. It was social distancing. You would have been invited. There. there were other people there, but this wasn't me. So, so next birthday, next time he's got a big milestone birthday, I'll go. Because I, I mean, I, I love Michelle as well. And I think they, they have this, and I love her book. And they obviously have this marvelous marriage. So I'm just going to go to be, you know, just a, just a kind of, you know, admiring friend. Admiring yeah. friend. <laughs> yes, but now the truth will be out. He is yeah, your celebrity I, crush. Yeah, I know. And now, now he'll never put me on his on his reading list because he does that start <laughs> reading list and I have, you have friends on there. So he never, never put me on there. No, no, no I've said that. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My next one is, so I don't know if you have this in England. Do you have, do you have guilty pleasure foods? Like the foods that you love that you're not supposed to? Yes. What is yours? Well, other than tea, which obviously I've been banned from yeah. because of my excessive uh, consumption of tea. Um, I, what do I, I, I guilty pleasure foods i tell you i tell you my favorite thing my favorite thing and this, this i really love a scone i really love a big scone with cream and jam that's my 
that's my favorite thing. So that would be my last meal. Now definitely. you know the way you say scone is very like a scone, northern. Not like a scone. Yeah, I have a yeah. So that's what I do. I did. I did think of uh, you know, I did think that I you know, it would be one of my projects to try scones in every part of the country and see where they were best. Um, do you like do you do you like them kind of plain or do you like them with like icing and all that? You know, I have other... any scone. I I have any kind of scone. So oh, I, think yeah, that's, I I I I definitely I I'd have a I'd have a lot of them. I think that's definitely definitely my guilty pleasure but my school I tell you my other guilty pleasure is what I kind of like never re, never reimagined is my school I was lived in Birmingham and we live very near uh, the, the, the school and all, all of Birmingham is very much a uh, uh very much Cadbury's chocolate is a huge industry in Birmingham mm-hmm. and uh, and many of my friends go from Bourneville where the factory is and we did I we did get a job lot some job lots of chocolate to the school and they made this amazing pudding called chocolate concrete and they would never give us a recipe I they they, they decided they quite liked me as an alumni because I've been as I said to them you know they said they, they had mistress wrote to me and they said she said I really enjoyed your tv programs I was like could I have the chocolate concrete recipe as a as a sort of you know exception I'm a really good alumni now but she said no the chocolate concrete recipe is secret no one oh, could ever God. have it it's like the early recipe for Google and no one so the chop this is like it's kind of had this crispy top and it was soft inside and sometimes we used to hit it with a spoon it used to fly off across the dining hall so chocolate concrete the days when we had chocolate concrete at school it was about once a term and it was the you know the happiest day I mean I know that you know, these school days are supposed to be their happiest days of your life. Mine was mainly when we had chocolate concrete. So <laughs> my, my guilty pleasure would be chocolate concrete, but it has to be like it was at school because I have seen recipes and it's never, and I've tried to do them and I, it, it's never been quite the same. And uh, yes, yeah. So ch- I think it's because they got this job lot of chocolate from Cadbury's and I think that it was, they got something special in there. Well, as the man in charge of the time machine, I will ensure that is as they made it in your school. Thank you. Um, now we're at number four. All right. Now don't, I got to ask this one. Who has better hair? You or Susanna Lipscomb? Oh, it's definitely Susie. Definitely. Oh, Susie. really? Yeah, I think we've, I think we've, got, we've both got good hair, but um, it's so funny. We so often mistaken for one another. We so often we're mistaken for one another and people um, talk to me and then write and send, send her a message saying it was lovely chatting to you. And she said, what? And they do the same. They, they talk to her and we, they, we're so often mistaken for each other. So occasionally we if we ever get together, we put a picture saying, here we are in the same room. We're actually two, 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 two sort of people. And, um, and obviously we have different color hair, but, uh, but I think, but um, no, I, um, but it's, it's funny, isn't it? You know, when you're, when I was, a, when I was a child, of course, you know, I hated my hair. I hated having red hair um, because particularly, and I hated having curly hair because perms were the thing when I was younger. And, yeah. you know, you want to have perm hair. Curly hair was good, but not per, but you need to be permed. So everyone, you know, thought, could you get a perm? Might look better. And I'm so glad I didn't. I'm glad I didn't get a perm. I got, imagine how huge it would have been. But uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I think it's, I think it's fantastic we're both hair together. But I, I love, I love, I love Susie's hair. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, but I love mine too. But you know what, Emma Hamilton, like the subject of my first book, she um, apparently has hair down to her feet, and I do reckon. Oh my god. It was like, 18th century extensions but still um, <laughs> yeah, I can't horse tail. any longer than this I've been trying I can't grow it any longer my great grandma my Liverpool great grandma she uh, could sit on it she could definitely sit on her hair and that that is my dream but I think it's not it's not going to happen now so you've hit your I've, limit <laughs> I've hit my hair my hair plateau it's plateau. It's just going out it's just not growing longer but yeah I love I love I love Susan. I think we've both, we've both got good hair I think it's both but yeah, I, I, I love her, and I think yes, I think she wins. I think she wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate the honesty of your answer, and I'm sure she will too. Um, and then, final question is: What is the most embarrassing moment you've had in public? Well, let me try. <laughs> uh, let me try and think. Oh, uh, oh, well, there's many, 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 so many, so many. I, I go home. Like, oh no, my because you, you do when you do your shows, you do a lot of walking and talking. Yeah, I always cringe. My, I've got. A, a friend of mine who's a comedian said that um, uh, uh, she was the a therapist was saying that you know we are, we are pack animals and and so we're taught to be in a pack. So if you go out of the pack, you, you immediately feel a sense of kind of embarrassment and shame because we want to stay in the pack because otherwise you get, the predators are going to get us. You know, if we're a load of gazelles, the lions going to get us if we go out of the pack. So so shame works to keep in the pack. So so nearly most nearly everything I do, I, I find a very embarrassing moment. But I think I think that. Um, what I think that it would definitely be one um, when I was very small and I was it was a it was a brownie kind of big 
brownies it's the kind of girl scouts equivalent for the little kids so i was about six i think and we were all waiting in a circle we were always like singing songs and things and waiting in a circle and i was just just too embarrassed to ask if i could go to the loo and you can imagine what happened and i was yeah that was so embarrassing so i think that that would that would that would be that would be it that would be it yeah i still, I still remember it today um as a brownie yes like, oh you were a brownie I was a brownie. I was a very keen brownie. I was an excellent brownie. So that was a bad start to brownies. But then I then I really got then I got better about you know weeing on the floor <laughs> because I didn't ask you to do. And that was quite a bad start. But I got better there, and I, then I became a leader. I was the leader of the gnomes. So my group were called the gnomes, and I was the first gnome. So I was the top gnome. So and I had lots of duties. I had to collect ten p each in um, in subs. So, and I had to lead the gnomes into all kinds of triumphs. And I'm afraid that the pixies always beat us as did the elves. The gnomes were generally seen as the ones who didn't win. But but I I, I, I was quite, I think it was my, my leadership peak in brownies, leading the gnomes. <laughs> <laughs> like your hair, it plateaued. It plateaued, yeah. After that, I was like, yeah, the gnome, the, the, the lead gnome was the, was the best. I was the lead, the lead gnome. But yeah, I, that, was, that, was, that, was a, that was a bad start to brownies, but I did love brownies and kept at it. I did enjoy it. Well, that was quite, you, 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 that, that was amazing that you overcame that because that's, that's really tough to overcome. Uh, not that I know, I have never had that experience, but geez. That does not. That doesn't sound. Yeah, good. always. I, I was just too. But they were. They were very nice about it. They were just like, you, know, you should ask if you want to go to the league. I, I just. I just was too embarrassed to ask. I was, everyone was older than me, and you, it was much older than me. I, yeah, so that, I think that's definitely my most embarrassing one. But there are many. But I. But I, But there are many, many, many moments. <laughs> many moments when I've done a talk or a TV program. Like, oh no! What did I say? What did I really say that? Oh dear. <laughs> Hey, if you like what you hear, like and subscribe. It really means a lot, and we would love to have you coming back every week. Thank you.